Hello and welcome to Angry Andy Reviews and this is my review of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. So, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, set two years after um, Ghostbusters Afterlife. It takes place in New York, the Spengler family, as they are now called, along with uh, Mr. Gruberson, travel and stay in New York. And they have been for some time, we guess, uh, so we're told, and they are now fully active Ghostbusters, not being paid for whatever reason. It's all very strange. And, of course... A mysterious artifact is discovered, an orb which is encasing a malevolent spirit, an evil being of enormous frozen power who ultimate goal, I guess, is to freeze the entire world for whatever purpose, for whatever reason, and they must do battle with it. All sounds okay, doesn't it? Except this film is unfortunately, disappointingly, a massive mess. It is overpopulated with characters. New, old, previous characters from the, the last instalment. It's overstuffed. It's There's too many plot threads going on. There's too many subplots. There's too many story angles. There's some really questionable moments in this film that don't land. The comedy doesn't land at all. I have no idea what has happened with this film and I've got to be honest with you, I am massively, massively disappointed by this film. I am a huge Ghostbusters fan, I have bloody collectibles left, right and centre, I've got Lego, I've, <laughs> I've got action figures. I really enjoyed Afterlife, I, I really enjoyed it, I know a lot of people had gripes and um, issues with it, but I really enjoyed it, it hit all the right notes for me, it was a bit too over nostalgic, and here again with Frozen Empire we, 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 we try our absolute best to, to move on with these new characters and yet the film is held back by this nostalgia. I, I, I get what they're trying to do and I have a theory of my own as to why, but it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. This film is ultimately held back by a, a, a sorry inability, inability to, to leave the past behind and hand over the keys, which is what I thought and possibly a lot of other people thought might well happen with this film. We, we were given that nod at the end of Afterlife that the passing of the torch was taking place and perhaps we could get new stories, new ideas, new journeys with these characters. And alas, instead, these characters from Afterlife feel shortchanged. It's so bizarre. A lot of focus is given to them in this film, but the relationships that were developed on in Afterlife are only paid lip service. It's, it's strange. We have this emotional arc that we're supposed to have, and spoilers here, of course. We're supposed to have an emotional arc with, with uh, McKenna Grace's Phoebe, um, who is struggling with her own identity. She doesn't, she, she's restricted from being a Ghostbuster due to age and because of something that happens. And, and yet we're supposed to have this inter-family dynamic. But the family dynamic doesn't come across at all. What's changed since the previous film? Is it the writing? Is it the story beats? Is it... Uh, I don't know. Is it just mixed messages? It's, it's bizarre. It doesn't work whatsoever. The fundamental point of this, of this, this team, was that they were a family that had come together. You know, after all the confusion and misunderstandings about what, why, why Egon disappeared and abandoned his previous team and abandoned his family, and here we don't build on any of that. We don't build on this idea that they they come together fully as a family unit. For fuck's sake, there is a point in this film where Trevor is completely sidelined for no reason whatsoever. And it's an attempt at comedy, again, that doesn't land. But Callie, Trevor's mum, completely almost shuns him for whatever reason. He comes and asks for help because 
there's something happening in the attic and his mum is too busy scrolling on the phone, completely ignores him and says, well, you're an adult, you can fucking deal with it yourself, can't you? And it doesn't land, it doesn't work because the messaging is mixed and doesn't make any sense. There's supposed to be a unit that's come together. We had this big, wonderful moment at the end of Afterlife where everyone comes together to help defeat Goza. And here, they're all separated. They're all doing their own bits and pieces. The relationship between Gruberson and Callie doesn't make any sense either. There's a, they, do we have any sense that they're in love, these two people, or what? Do we have any sense that he wants to become part of this family. Barely, yes, but in, in terms of them having a, an intimate relationship, it doesn't really seem like they are. They're more like brother and sister, which is weird. It's a baffling set of choices. The main story itself is really lacklustre. Like I said, there are threads going everywhere. We have the, the business with Trevor. We have this awful awful side plot with with phoebe and this this girl ghost who died in a fire and the questionable moment which i'm hesitant to really discuss here but i have to because it just it highlights how much doesn't work in this film and it's an absolute unmitigated disaster in this film phoebe we're shown a MacGuffin whereby you can separate ghosts from matter and <laughs> Of course, you know where this is going. She puts herself in this machine so that she can become a ghost for two minutes. She separates her soul from her body, effectively committing suicide for two minutes just so that she can have a fucking friend. What kind of message is that to send to, uh, to kids? To kids that have, uh, don't have any friends? What are you fucking saying here? My God, you it's wrong. It is a wrong fucking message. And maybe I'm thinking too much about it, but I'm not the only one that thought that. The missus looked at me and thought, God, this is questionable. And there were a few other people, I fucking heard it, a few other people in the screen and went, oh, it's, it's, it's not a good moment. It's really questionable. It's very uncomfortable. I get what they're trying to do. With a lot of this film, I feel like the heart is in the right place. But they're too focused on these these side stories, these bizarre stories, these questionable character motion, motivations. I mean, it's 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 unfortunate, and it's made even worse by the addition of these additional characters that don't need to be there. Kumail Nanjiani, I don't doubt him as a comedian. He's not really the type of comedy that I get on board with, but here. He is misplaced, he is miscast, and he takes up a lot of screen time and offers comedy that doesn't land. He, his performance really, really detracted from the film for me. Completely detracted from the film for me. I didn't want him to be there. I feel like if you get his character out of the way, you could have given his abilities to podcast or to the other girl from, from, from Afterlife, who are both shortchanged. They're both here on the basis of the fact that they were in Afterlife. They don't do anything else. They're just there taking up space. Give them the parts that you've given to Kumail Nanjiani. You can briefly explain it in flashbacks, whatever you want to do, like you do with this film. And Patton Oswalt is a brilliant person. Again, his heart is always on his sleeve. He, he's a perfect actor. He's, he loves everything. But here... He takes away from Ray. Weirdly enough, he does the same thing that Ray does in all the original films, where he comes up with the knowledge, the understanding, the meanings. Yeah, okay, they try and play it up that Ray doesn't understand the language, but would it be too much of a stretch for Ray just to go, oh yeah, I recognise this language and be able to do it, or at least work with podcasts, which they were pointing at in this film, working together. Could they not have worked together to figure out what this language is on this orb? No, instead we have another character in. Again, he's, he's okay, he's there, he's only there for a short bit of time. It's, a, it's not really a cameo, he's a, he's, a, he's a character, he's never been in these films before. But again, it's just wasted and ham-fisted in for no reason whatsoever, taking away from other characters. Bill Murray himself, quite clearly, doesn't want to be there at all. And I get the sense, and this is what I'm, I'm going to talk about with my sort of theory, I get the sense that... Bill Murray is there, and a lot of the reasons why they're forcing some of the old stuff with the OGs is because the survivor's guilt. And it, it bothers me, and it, I, I'm guessing it probably bothers a lot of the others, because there was always the idea to have Ghostbusters 3, and it never came off. It never happened. 
And I wonder deep down whether a lot of the things that are happening within this film that just don't work, this forcing of all these different character moments, the, the overstuffing of absolutely everything, these, these side people, these side missions, these side ghosts ugh, that just lead to nowhere. I, I wonder if it is purely survivor's guilt. Like, we, we finally got to a place where people want Ghostbusters films, which they always did, but your own selfishness, your own hubris at the time prevented a third film from being put into production, and now you feel like you have to be involved because you refuse to be involved all the way back then. And because of the response to Afterlife, because of everybody enjoying the fact that we had this beautiful moment at the end, you now feel you, you're obliged to do it. Again, maybe I'm overthinking, but I can't help but shake that thought with this film. Unfortunately, the villain is, while he's interesting looking, again, he's shortchanged. I mean, it's, that's usually a product of what we get with the Ghostbusters films. The villains always come at the end and they just flitter away. It is what it is. But there's a lot of things missing from the trailer. There's a lot of moments that are missing from the trailer in this film. And I wonder how much has been left on the cutting room floor. It's very long. It takes a very long time to get going in this film. And like I said, there are a lot of callbacks, a lot of nostalgia elements, a lot of side missions that go to nowhere were shown ghosts that we think oh that might be interesting and then nothing ever comes of it it's it's just overwhelmingly messy and i am like i said fundamentally massively disappointed i think the effects are fun i think it's always it's always nice to have you know the, the classic references and everything but not at the expense of good writing which is not here not the expense of good story, which is not here. And after Afterlife, how the hell did you get to this point? You had a really good story, a really tight-knit story of a family trying to make sense of something that was lost. And here, it's 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 just generic. It's bland, it's boring, it's tepid. It, it trudges along for the first hour, and then you realise you've still got another hour left, and you're like, oh, come on, get on with it. There we go. Like I said, the effects are okay, the effects are fun, but it's not funny. It's not funny. I didn't laugh one single time in this film. But there we go. I am going to have to give this film a... Man, it's going to have to be a... a oh, jeez. A 4 out of 10. I have to give this film a 4 out of 10. I re really did not enjoy this film whatsoever. It's it's on par with Ghostbusters 2016, I think it was for me, um, with the writing. I feel the writing's just as bad as it was then, to be honest with you. I really do. And the performances are, are just as bad as they were then. <laughs> oh, man. But there you go. Uh, 4 out of 10. I'm massively disappointed. I am a huge Ghostbusters fan, like I said at the top of this video, um, and I, I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, I'm not sure where this film is up to in terms of a lot of the other reviews from, from what the missus has told me. It's, it's not done very well. What that means in terms of box office, I don't know. Will we get a third film? Um, I hope so. Because let's face it, baby, these days, you got to have a sequel. No! No! So that they can rectify a lot of the issues and the mistakes they've made here and try and streamline this this idea i know what they're trying to do they're trying to create this this universe of ghostbusters this this conglomeration this 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 unit of you know multiple ghostbusters possibly working elsewhere a lot of ghosts get released in this film um but you know is it gonna work is it gonna work when you shortchange your central cast and ultimately overstuff the rest of it, if it's not working with a, with a cast full of people, then what, what, what hope have you got going forward? But there we go. I'm going to leave this review there. A four out of ten. Man, what an absolute disaster. What a grade A disappointment. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this review, please do like and subscribe to the channel. I'm very grateful for all the recent subscribers and for all the comments that have been coming through with these reviews. Yeah, I really do appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts on this film where you stand. Are you a Ghostbusters fan? Um, how does this film track with you? Um, if you're not a Ghostbusters fan but have seen this film, what do you think? Uh, am I wrong? Let me know. It's only my opinion at the end of the day. Um, but let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching.
Bye-bye.